How's it going guys, Oz and Mayo here. I'm uh, doing a quick little intro before we get the video. I want you to imagine that you work one weekend and as a result of that one weekend and never lifting a finger after that, you make five to $10,000 a month for the next one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and even longer. I know that sounds crazy, but that's exactly what our heroes are doing right now today. And in this class, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna show you all kinds of crazy, really cool stuff. We're gonna go over a lot today, but I'm making this quick note before the class. because I want you to know that at BigRia.com, we have the number one YouTube channel for Indiana real estate. We're also building the world's largest organization of special needs business owners. Our mission here is to build lifelong friends around the world, helping people around the world uh, build generational wealth through Indiana with Indiana real estate and business building, all kinds of cool stuff. And right now, to be a part of that movement, to help that movement spread, we'd really appreciate your help in doing that. The reach on this channel, not just on YouTube, but elsewhere, has about doubled in the last 60 days, and there's some metrics that are really important. So if this video helps you in any way, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button and you shared it, or at least hit that like button, because it sends Google a message that this video is important and that it can help people. And you never know, it might get put in somebody else's algorithm them and can help them change lives. You can have a huge ripple effect just by hitting that like button. It'd really help us and I appreciate it. It'll really help us out. You get to be a part of the movement and you get to change lives. How cool is that? Okay, let's get the class started. How's it going guys? Oz and Mayo here at BigRia.com. This is a BigRia.com real estate investor's guide to creating passive income. And there's three arrows right here. So you know it's real. Uh, 19 ways for real estate investors to create an extra $5,000 a month of passive income. Do you want to make an extra... Do you want to do something for one weekend or one day and make $5,000 a month for the next one year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years? This class is just is all about that. So uh, 19 ways for real estate investors to create an extra five grand a month in passive income with no money down, no loans, no credit, no experience starting from zero without leaving your house. This was the adjusted. This was the uh, addition of Justine. And we appreciate that. Um, okay, so usually we do, whenever we do these classes, sometimes we have the video, sometimes you don't. The video's on this time, right? Right, I wanna make sure. Well, you never know. Um, so we're gonna have some input here and we're gonna go back and forth and eventually, now that we're getting back to having our, we're uh, fitting this house more, more appropriately, we'll be able to have actually whiteboard classes as well. So that's pretty exciting. The bottom line here, I always have a promise whenever we go over this. If you sit down and you actually go through this, what are you actually going to learn by the time we're done here? If you focus this class, I promise you, you will know more about uh, passive income and creating passive income. You guys have been, we've been talking about this for a while. We, you'll know more about creating a, a, an absolutely passive income where money comes in and it grows without you doing anything. You'll know more about that than any human being you'll ever meet in real estate or in business in general. You will know more. A lot of the things we're going to talk about um, are things that people on our team have developed, invented, we've come up with. We spent a lot of time on this stuff. Working once and getting paid for the rest of your life. Getting paid for life, P4L or PFL. Um, not FML, that's totally different. $5,000 a month of passive income. Uh, first, how to master the art of working once and getting paid for the rest of your life. I'm gonna go over different models on that and making that happen. How to work for one weekend and get paid $5,000 a month for the next two years. We've got an example of that here in the room. Uh, how to use bumper stickers and how many you need exactly to make $10,000 a month. This is an answer that we've been trying for, I think since uh, 2009 was the first time. I want to get this question. We've had different answers. We actually do have an answer today. How many bumper stickers do you have to put out to make 10 grand a month? And once you get enough bumper stickers out, by the way, the calls continue to come in. They come in for the next one year, three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years. The calls keep coming in from your bumper stickers. How, how many do you need to put out to make 10 grand a month, right? What a question. Nobody's gonna give you the answer to that question. You're gonna get that answer today. Good, oh, no comment. Uh, what exactly, okay, so what exactly is passive income? We should define that. Uh, passive income is money that comes in without you doing anything. What is that, a picture, a guy falling? Is that, isn't that a fail? Why would we put a fail on the, oh, a ladder. Ladder, what? All right, passive income. If you wanna get, you can download this guide. You get this uh, with, um, about 30% recover is actually on the guide, but the guide is brilliant. All this stuff that's on here is brilliant and amazing. I love doing it this way when I'm not really sure what's coming up next. Passive income is money that comes in without you doing anything. Money that comes in every month, every day, every week without you lifting a finger. That's a definition of passive income. So if you have to do anything for that money to come in, it's not, we're not gonna consider it passive income. So this is money that comes in if you did nothing at all, if you just sat around and watch porn all day, uh, you, you get you get the money coming in. Um, I guess that's technically doing something. If you're just laying in bed and sleeping all day and you did nothing, the money would come in regularly. That means you have to have a few systems in place. You have to have a system to check 
for where things are at and you have to have a series of trigger events and reaction events. So when, if this happens, then this happens. And you have to have a series of these events, we're gonna talk about these later, that get triggered without you doing anything. You have to have some form of autonomy, meaning it's self-governing. So passive income is money that comes in without you doing anything. The BLA, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics says, and I, I remember hearing about this, this exact number, and it's been on my mind ever since I heard it. The ultra wealthy make $1 million to $3 million a year in passive income. So now we have a definition and a target. Remember, we talked about 10 to 30 grand a month for your business. Now we're talking about for ultra wealthy, it's one to $3 million a year. That's what we want to be our target goal eventually. So five grand a month, it's a lot easier to go from five grand a month to a million dollars a year than it is to go from zero to five grand a month. Because zero to five grand a month requires like, you know, not watching porn. So, well, usually, um, watch somebody's gonna go out and watch porn and make a million. See, I told you, Uh Now we have a definition of target: one million to three million dollars a year. That's the ultra wealthy. It is much easier to go from five grand to one. Oh, how brilliant! This is what I just said: um, five grand to one million, then from zero to five grand. This is how you know people are good when they're parroting you. They sound brilliant because they sound just like me, right? So modest. Just get to the execution. That's the important part. All right, empire building mission. First, you see the opportunity. Okay, build the ladder, one that works. Ideally, that's what this picture comes from. So, Empire, you don't have to, you don't have to follow along, brother. You can just hear me. I'll explain everything with great detail. A guy's falling off a ladder. All right, Empire Building Mission. First, you got to see the opportunity, right? This is no matter where you're at, how are we working with, whether it's people that have the most, in America at least, the most, uh, the people at the bottom of the barrel, uh, financially, economically speaking, it's the same process for them. First, you gotta see the ladder for yourself, then you have to build your, or you have to see the opportunity that you can actually do it. Here are all the different ways that I can apply these models to companies and to real estate and to things around me right now. This is how I can use my business building skill and get out of this generational rut that I'm in, because first you should understand that's what you're in. It is a generational rut, you're in that, First, I gotta see the opportunities to get myself out. Here's how I can make 20 grand a month here. Here's how I can make five grand a month here. Three grand a month with this. First, you see the opportunity. It's the first most important part. It's like the colorblind being opportunity blind. If you don't have names for it, if you don't have the policies and the, 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 the checklist and stuff to see these opportunities, right? You won't see them. We've talked about this before. It's the most important part. The reason the, the takeaway from every time you go through any of my stuff, the first thing you should do is you should look at the world differently, right? And we know that ultimately the ultra high achievers, they look at themselves with more optimism, they look at humanity with more optimism, and they look at the future. Those three things, yourselves, others, and the future with you know undying optimism and infinite gratitude. And that's where we were talking about this earlier, right? When we had... Um, it's the most important thing is that you see the opportunity because then you can start to see different ways of capitalizing. So see the opportunity, build your ladder to get there and then help others build their ladder. That is our empire building mission. What all of our stuff is about using your skill, being a badass for yourself and others. Really good stuff. All right. So what's the difference? Lewis Terman, study of IQ. I've talked about this a thousand times. I hope you're sick of hearing about it. Well, I'm not sick of hearing about it, but you should know everything I'm about to say right now. Uh, new information about this, by the way, my cousin uh, told me at Stanford, they have the Terman Hall. And it's some brilliant biochemist or something. I don't know what he was, but that guy is this guy's son. Um, I've, so it's a new piece of information about this. Lewis Terman, this is the, of all the studies that have ever been done. I read psychological studies and um, math studies and all this stuff. I've read thousands of them. So when I tell you this is like the most important one or one of the most important ones, that's a big deal. But this isn't just me. This is one of the most frequently, most famous studies ever done. Lewis Terman was a guy who... I've talked about it many times. He was an, uh, um, a uh, eugenist, which is like all the racist people. Like black people are dumb because of their brains. They're smaller. What Leonardo DiCaprio said at Django Unchained, where he's like, they got them three dots on the back of the head, right? That's eugenics. Really bad, awful, terrible stuff. He was a believer in that. He believed that IQ, certain you know races are just born uh, superior. And er what determined how far you're going to go in life is just your IQ alone. So he did a really amazing study that changed... His life changed everything we do as far as public policy, what you were talking about earlier about cleanliness and our um, other girls, Ellen Richards, who's one of our badass of the week people. Uh, this is around the same time. He took 250,000 kids, tested them, and took the absolute highest, it was like one-tenth of one percent um, IQ. So uh, insanely level high, high uh, IQs, like 140, 150 above high IQs. Basically the Oz and Mayos, little kids. Um, Honestly, I was never at that level. Um, this is insane, like the smartest of the smartest, like 160, 170 um, IQs. And they said, basically, now I have identified and, you know, take little kids 
at the youngest age before formal education has given them the chance to excel, just who has raw mental horsepower. And let's follow them through life because these people are gonna do the best. And what they found was actually pretty shocking that the results that they found were some people did really well. Some people you know, were at the top of their field academically, professionally, financially, they were at the top. But there are a lot of people who were at the bottom. They were basically, by any objective measure, kind of like losers. Not, you know, they they weren't. The the the, the way they looked at it in the study, they said these are people who are at the bottom. They they're really, you know, accomplishment lists. They have no accomplishments, but they have insanely high IQs. So throughout this interval of following them through their lives, they wouldn't follow them over one year, two years, three years, five years. They followed them over twenty years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years. This was done in the twenties. And they follow them to see how far does do you go? If you have raw, mental, insanely high IQ, do you lose it over time or what happens? They would test them again. They found out, no, you don't lose it. These people who are like the losers and the people who are not doing much and the people who are doing a lot, they maintain their IQ. They're insanely smart, but people around them wouldn't believe it because you wouldn't know that they're as brilliant as they are from the results. So the question becomes, What's the difference? Why are some people at the very top, some people just you know, at the very bottom, and that most people are basically in between? Most people they tested, most of these insanely genius people, high IQ people, basically end up finishing and competing life in the middle. What does this have to do with residual income and uh, what does this have to do with uh, creating passive income? This is the most important thing that you'll understand about when it comes to generational wealth, social mobility, income ascension. This study tells us more. It's been replicated many times. People follow people for 10, 20, 30 years. Look up like the, uh, um, um, the, what did the one you just uh, talked about? The, um, no, that was a different, that was the rats and the maid. That's another great one too. Um, the, the, um, the marshmallow, the marshmallow experiment. It's something like that, like the ability to de- delay your instant gratification. You get one marshmallow now or two if you wait. The people who waited for two, they basically did much better later in life by um, flexing that muscle of delaying gratification. Um, okay, so they, the question he had then, this is what changed his life, is if these people, if IQ doesn't determine how far you go, what determines how far you go? And they found out, you know what? Nothing determines how far you go more than where you started. The people who are at the top started at the top. The people who are at the bottom started at the bottom. The people in between started in between. In other words, the powers in our society of that the, you're more likely to marry outside of your race or outside of your religion than you are outside of your class, your income class. Think about that. The powers that we have, this it's not that it's actual segregation. Like at that time, you know, there was obviously, but like this was through all segregation, through all civil rights. Think about the time frame that we're talking about over any 50 year period in American history or any country's history. Things are completely different usually, especially if you're a developing economy, de- developing industry. None of that mattered. Nothing matters. Your income class doesn't change. This is like one of the core I- items I talk about constantly. Whether it's creating residual income or anything else, you have to understand that you are in a generational battle. And nobody, but nobody, even in America, there is no social mobility. Nobody changes their income class. It almost never happens. This skill, all our stuff is about bridging the gap, and you have to understand the significance. What you're doing is reshaping centuries of uh, financial illiteracy. And um, it's pretty badass, what, the power you have. And what you're not just doing for yourself but other people. That's one thing. The other thing to realize is that even having insane IQ, even having as a male level IQ, right? <laughs> even having, um, it, it doesn't matter. That's not what's going to make the difference. What's going to make the difference is creating, having these skills and being able to create income ascension, social mobility. If Think about it. If having a 150, 160, 170, Oz and Mayo IQ, uh, and honestly, people always talk about me like I'm, I was never in that category. Uh, mine would be what's called applied. Like I actually listen and paid attention and want to learn. And that's why it seems like that. Um, I was never raw. It was never like intrinsic or um, um, what they call it, intrinsic. Like I, I was never just like raw mental horsepower like they call it. I never had, I was never in that category. My cousins, that's my family were. That's how I know I wasn't. Um, but it's crazy that even having that doesn't make a difference. It's not going to change where you go. Look up that study, Lewis Terman study. It's really pretty, pretty fascinating. Um, where you start out is where you end up. They had this thing called distance. Basically, take where you're at financially, you know, your, 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 the money, the amount of the power and wealth that you have. And they just said, where does someone go? They, they call it distance. How far do you go from where you were born? And they, they had distance was I'm non-existent. You don't go anywhere based on where you were born. It's crazy, man. All right. So why is this time in history better than any other time 
when it comes to creating social mobility, income ascension, and all these things that we talk about. So see if you could see a pattern here. Oh, is this going to be the companies? Okay, this is super important. Okay, if you get nothing else out of creating income ascension and creating passive income, these are the this is like where are we at right now in history? So think about this. Uber is the biggest taxi cab in the world, yet they own zero cabs. Airbnb is the largest hotel company in the world. They own zero hotels or zero rooms. The largest apps and software vendors in the world, they don't create any apps, Google and Apple. One of the largest shipping companies in the world, um, about the largest shipping company in the world as far as the, uh, within their um, c consumer based is Amazon. They own zero trucks and zero planes. They don't own anything. The largest media company and media owner in the world is Facebook. They, do, they create zero content and they don't own any of the content. The largest telecom companies in the world are Skype and Zoom. They own zero phone and internet lines. What do you need for Skype and Zoom? By the way, look at Zoom, where they came out of nowhere and they killed Skype. Skype had a 15 year head start and lost to them. Why? Because it's not easy to record. Should have made it easy to record. Bill Gates slipping. The largest movie house in the world. What is it? Netflix. Netflix, lar largest movie and show house in the world, by the way. We could have put show house. Um, z owns zero theaters, and they don't even own the screens. They don't even own the cables. What is it? Think about, think about Netflix versus ABC or CBS, right? And yet, it's you that comes in and provides a screen, and you that provides a high-speed internet. You provide everything. They don't, what do they actually, uh, as far as the screens, what do they actually control? None of it. What do they own? Nothing. I gave away the answer. They own nothing. Apple's the largest cell phone company in the world. They have zero broadband cell bandwidth of their own or cell towers of their own. Google slash Alphabet, sometimes the most valuable company in the world. I think about this. We have Google that's about a trillion dollar company. And what do they make? They, have, they don't make anything. They don't sell anything, at least to the, to the consumer. It's a pretty remarkable thing. What is Google? What do they actually, and every, everything they try to make, except for one of the questions we talk about often is self-driving cars. Google's had a thousand ideas, almost all of them were failures, but self-driving vehicles, go back to 2012, when they came out with that self-driving vehicle, you remember that video that went viral, and people were laughing at it, and there's a Ford executive who was asked about it, actually laughed about it, saying, oh, it's uh, you know, a cute little idea of Silicon Valley. Go to any major car company today, they'll tell you that it's not just a possibility, but it is an inevitability. I drove, I've used this example many times, I drove, uh, I got, as soon as I, you could get one, I was a big nerd about getting the Tesla. I drove it from Missouri to Indiana, and it um, was like 90% of the way I was driving. Now it's the exact opposite. Like five years later, it drives itself 90% of the time. It's like an app with wheels. It updates itself regularly with the newest maps and the loot. And it's every time you use it, it's you're training it on how to drive without you. Self-driving vehicles used to cost $250,000 for that LiDAR on top of the Google car. Now, then it went down to 200,000, 150,000, 100,000, 50,000, 30,000, 10,000, 1,000 dollars. Now it's about $70, that same LiDAR. And eventually it'll be in your phone which I think they've got some examples of right now. That's what Google has done with all technology right now and everything that's happened, not just Google, but these other companies. You can use the same LiDAR that, that is now changing the world with all self-driving and autonomous driving vehicles, which is where things are going as far as drones and airplanes. Everything is eventually gonna be self-driving. And this is one area where they failed a thousand times, but the one time they got it right, they're totally revolutionizing the world. Anyway, a trillion dollar company, but what do they make? What do, what do they do? This is the time you should really appreciate because COVID has taught us, there's two things that COVID has done more than anything else. Number one, it's been more important for businesses to monetize their people than ever before and find different ways of doing it. Number two, it's never been easier to do all of this without leaving your house. It's unbelievable time, such a, the greatest time ever to be alive. It's amazing. Okay, so what is the point here? What is the, what is the takeaway from that? Ownership is nothing, control is everything. Azamayo said that. John Rockefeller copied it from me. This is a controlled economy. It's not about ownership. You don't need assets. You can control them. Asset brokering has never been more profitable, more important, and easier to do right now without leaving your house. That's what we're in. We're in a controlled economy. And that's really my point, to create income essential or anything. It's never been easier, more profitable to control assets than right now. Uh, historical. Um, you want to have a thriving, derm thriving dermatology business with no physical location? I've talked about this. Anna's multi-million dollar 2020. How did it happen? There was basically, if you're going to start doing remote teleappointments, especially with dermatology, one of the, the largest growing, um, the, the companies she picked up were failing dermatology companies and said, listen, we have no way of monetizing our people. If you can help us monetize our people, we'll give you a um, large chunk of our business. You do that with a few different companies and suddenly you have this massive, very profitable dermatology business. But what are you doing? You're scheduling appointments with, with their patients, building a better relationship with their patients, which they've done a terrible job of building a relationship with. But once you have that, 
you have that process walking people through that five crowds, right? You're getting good, you're building their fan base effectively. And then you're scheduling appointments with doctors who are not even at a physical location. Where are they? They're at their house or they're wherever at the university. And you're scheduling these appointments. You have a dermatology business. You don't own anything. And you have one of the largest dermatology businesses um, in, in, in the Midwest without actually owning anything. Think about that. If you had told me this one sentence a year ago, I would have said, I, I just, I don't see how that's even possible. How can you have to have something? But today you can do that. You can do it. Man, not only do you not leave your house, but nobody else has to leave their house either. And you can build a multi-million dollar, any business, but you know, it, it's just, it's an amazing time to create income and equity. Isn't just helping a business, but it can be the entire business. Create an income. As soon as we create income and we convert it to equity, we can start using it to build our forever fund and to build any amount of money that you want. And are we going to talk about the forever fund? Um, okay. I always invest in asymmetricals. We'll come back to the forever fund, right? I think so. Asymmetrical is one of our favorite things. Okay. So there's a great scene in a, there's a Sean Connery movie with uh, the kid, um, the fighting forester and the kids like why you wear your socks inside out and he's like uh, because some cultures believe it's you know good luck and he's like do you believe that and he's like well it's like praying it can't hurt and it can only help and that's what an asymmetrical is the reason why people so many times people are like oh should I do this or should I do it the answer is always yes invest in asymmetricals things that have zero to little negative side and have massive insane upside that's everything we're going to talk about today if you put out one sign, maybe nothing happens, but maybe you make five grand a week for the rest of your, you know, for the rest of the year or for the next three years. You can do that with asymmetricals. Asymmetricals take very little input, massive output. The first time I came to this, um, a molehill of risk, if that, and a mountain of reward. So almost no risk and that massive reward. The first time I realized about this um, is when I was, um, what, I don't know if it's the first time, it's the, the time I talk about the most. When I, I used to work at the Indiana State Fair and they used to bring these guys in that bring the tomatoes that are like the, you know, they, they are like the size of a baby pool. They barely fit in the back of a pickup truck. They'd have carrots the size of baseball bats. They'd have, you know, radishes that are, you know, that come up to your, your, your waist. They're, you know, giant. And they, you know, they have, they grow these huge, insanely big fruits and vegetables and they would, they, they, they would compete and try to see who's got the biggest one, you know. And there was one of these guys who was next to me and I asked him how they do it. I've always wondered, like, how do you grow them that big? And he said something I never forgot. He said, you know what? If you want to grow a regular tomato or one of these massive ones, 95% of everything you do is the exact same. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. That 95% is the same. It's that 5%. Those are the asymmetricals. It's a tiny little input. There's no risk. Very little. It seems like it's nothing. But when you multiply it, when you compound it, it is a huge difference. 95%. When you look at those giant tomatoes and you look at a regular tomato, 95% is the exact same. That's what we want to isolate. That 5%, those asymmetricals, things with very little, very low risk, and very insane high reward. So think about things like signs, email signatures, dialogue, talking to that guy, that girl, the person you're nervous about. Once you get this in your head, the asymmetricals, meaning we used to do a social influence class about how to talk to girls basically. And guys have a, an enormous... They have this, like if somebody's very attractive, usually they have a much a much higher level of threat. If somebody was insanely like overweight or unattractive or very old or something like that, they had no problem talking to them. So one of the things we'd say is go to a assisted living center where people are like 100 years old, 105 years old, and do you have any problem talking to people or approaching or having dialogue or anything? And they don't. What's the difference? It's your level of threat. But once you get this in your head, the asymmetrical, meaning there's no, no risk, well, then you're Johnny Dangerous. You have bulletproof self-image. And yeah, State Fair, super growers, 95% are the same. Focus on a tiny 5%, that asymmetrical. Did that come up in the right order? Yeah, I love it when I say, because right, we're on the, same, on the same wavelength. All right, so that's what we're doing here. We want to invest in the asymmetricals. So the Forever Fund, we talk about this. This is the most, the, the, of, of all the things we talk about, this is the most important number for you to keep in mind. This is the most obvious way to create passive income. Passive income, passive income. Just get enough money invested where you earn 10 to 20, 30%. We went over the, um, if you were here earlier, we went over some of the numbers um, before, um, which at 5%, it's a 10 to 30 grand a month. Um, you need about two to $6 million. So if you don't know where to start, just say, you know what? I need about three, 4 million, some range within two to million, two to $6 million. What you're saying then is this is how many, how much assets, how much cash I need that's making me 5% that will produce 10 to 30 grand a month. It's a forever fund. It lasts forever. I reinvest half my profits and the money keeps growing. And so the, and even if you don't do that, even if you go through that 30 grand a month, hundred percent, you never touch the actual amount. That's why we call it a forever fund. This will determine, think about it this way. If you get this going versus if you get a kid somehow that's a genius, high level genius, right? It's just crazy to think about because we don't want to believe that, especially in America. We want to believe if the kid's a genius, he'll make it. 
He won't. It's not going to be the genius. It's not the IQ. It is this. It's the money, man. Uh, what COVID has taught us, if nothing else, is there are two Americas, at least two Americas. If you've got money, you're in one place. I know how terrible that sounds, and it's like politically incorrect or whatever, but it's true. If you're not in that group, you're everyone else, and you're expendable, and you're just always going to be talked down to. Listen, it doesn't matter how you feel politically, but look at what's happened with the people who won that said $2,000, you're going to get $2,000. The minute they won, how do people tolerate this? The minute they won, what did they say? Oh, well, it's not going to be $2,000. It's, it's like, how could you do that? They would never talk like that to the, you know, to, to the people with money, with power, with that. They only talk like that to the people they can, the people they can put in their place. It's crazy. How can you, and, and people still go out and it's crazy, man. And then they wonder why there's, uh, you know, um, well, I better... Leave it at that. All right. Um, remember that anytime you invest money, it has been used to complete, to complete transactions. So anytime you put that, where you put that $2 million, $3 million, $6 million, $5 million, whatever, you're putting it, you're giving it to a company or a business or a group, and all they're going to do is to control transactions. So by controlling transactions, you control money. The same work, the same thing that you're going to do right now, the same seed fills all three money buckets, the money now, money over time, money later, because the money later and the money over time is our forever fund. But you can fill all three of those with the same exact work. You can, anytime you increase income in any business, any uh, commercial property, anything, you increase value. And when you increase value, what do you increase? You increase equity. So you can actually create, the easiest way to create money is not to save money. Fill the first bucket, then the second, then the third, all focus on delaying money. Is that... Um, Okay, well, I don't know if we're going to get to the... Okay, so fill the first bucket up, get your 10 to 30 grand a month. The second bucket is getting 10 to 30 grand a month passively or, you know, residually. And then all focus on dealing on, on delaying money. You know you're good, you're good when you don't want the money. That's where you're going to be really quickly. You know, like, I don't want the money. I just want to reinvest it in companies. So only work with companies that you want to invest in because when they start owing you money, you want to turn around and reinvest in that company, start buying shares. Remember, anytime you reinvest money, I'm sure we're going to talk about this today, the, reason, the way we create residual income, we reinvest money, we immediately make 10 to 20% because if a company owes you money and you give it back to them, you immediately get some return on that. Instantly, you instantly make 10, 20% of your money. Okay, uh, the Forever Fund, the big secret. Do not. Okay, this is exactly what I was getting at, right? Um, thank you for putting that in there. Do not save money. Don't sit there and try to penny, nickel, and dime. Oh, let's buy generic cereal and make sure the kids are wearing, you know, um, you know, recycled clothes or whatnot. That's okay. Just like, like cheap, you know, like purposely making sure they sacrifice just so you could save money. Don't save money. Create money because, like I said, anytime you create income, that has a value. When you create five thousand dollars a month, ten thousand dollars a month residual income for yourself or royalties for yourself, that money has a value, right? And it's not just a value for you, but it has a value for that business. And once you understand what that value is, you can use that value, that enhanced. Um, improvement in the company's value as an equity stake for yourself so you can build your money now, your money over time, and your forever fund at the same time with the same work, the same effort. It's brilliant. If this is on uh, uh, YouTube or if this is ever anywhere, you should like it, please. It makes a difference. It lets YouTube know, it lets people know that this is... Uh, that I did what I said I would do. Okay, this is our passive income pyramid. How we, it's not just about making an extra two to three grand a month. Some people do that, five grand a month, 10 grand a month, that's the problem. I've looked at why is it that I pulled away and I, and I stopped working with uh, people for so long. And it's because I've had students have gone out and made 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand a month. And on a long enough scale, three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, they are back to what they used to do before. In fact, if you don't do this, what I'm gonna talk about now, the very top, you're almost certainly not gonna get there. And everybody in real estate that makes money or that has long-term money, just about, they all had money to begin with. It's just like that Terman experiment. The people who make it in real estate were already there. The idea that you're gonna start a business and it's gonna get you to the 1%, 30 grand a month, or the, even the top 10%, 10 grand a month, and you're gonna be there long-term, meaning a, a, a generation, 25 years, is almost impossible unless you build this. I've had people that have done it. Everyone that did that built this. You've got to understand this. So at the bottom here, we have the transaction agreement. This is where you're just going to get paid per sale. We could start with that. No problem. Ain't no thing. It's basically like a commission salesperson. Then we have residuals. This is where we start getting really interesting because now you're saying, okay, I'm going to make X amount right now and then I'm going to make X amount every month. Residuals are usually every month that we're talking about and it's going to be a residual from a, a transaction that's already happened. That's the difference between residuals and royalties, um, at least for our purposes. 
get paid for previous transactions and work, residuals. Royalties are a little bit different. This is like when I used to write copy, the first thing I do is I'd say, okay, well, I'm obviously gonna get residuals from the, the transactions you have, but royalties as well, meaning any new transactions you have as a result of this copy. When we do something like the manufactured franchise model, which we'll talk about later, this is important. So this is where you get paid for business and for new business and new transactions. And then you have license agreements. All licensing means is you're renting it out. You with your Microsoft Word or Windows, you don't own it. It's a license agreement or ULA user license um, agreement, uh, user license and uh, end user license agreement, ELU or whatever. A, LA, ELA, uh, ULA, user license agreement. Um, and there's different versions they have, but basically you don't own Microsoft Windows. You're just licensing it. You rent it, basically. Uh, rent brilliant out for both residuals and royalties. This is where you're going to take something. Um, we'll talk more about this, I think, later. It's one of the main ones we use all the time. This is the easiest way to make like 50 grand a month is to take existing practices that are effective, right, and then go put them somewhere else. I've used this example of Time Cop, a John claude Van Damme movie, um, where this guy at the very beginning of the movie um, you can look up the, uh, there's a, the, the clip at the beginning, there's a guy who shows up, the Robert E. Lee, the um, gold, the guy's taking gold from the Confederacy or some war or something. And he, this guy shows up and there's all these guys on, on horseback and he says, I need the gold because the gold's worth like hundreds of millions today or something like that. And he's like, I need the gold. And the guy's like, you know, you need to get out of the way. You don't have an army with you. We have an army. And the guy's like, I need the gold. Give me the gold. I'll let you live. And they're like, what are you talking about? Well, there's 10 of us, like one of you or whatever, like three or four or five, six of them. And the guys are pulling, then the guys like, get out of the way. We're going to shoot you. And they pull out their muskets and they're starting to, you know, you know, do the cotton swab thing. And they're going to, you know, get them. And the guy pulls out two machine guns and mows them down in like one second. That's the effect that an MFM can have. When you take good policies in one area, you move it to another. It's like taking a machine gun and fighting, you know, Confederate soldiers. There's no chance. That's, and you can do that and rent that brilliance out. There's nothing more profitable than renting these little pieces of brilliance out because you can get them anywhere, rent them out to a company, help them execute them, and you get paid residually. And you get paid both on royalties and residually, not just the transactions you have now, but you get paid indefinitely. It's one of the easiest ways. We're building now 1 million. Um, one of our uh, sister companies from our special needs group is a group of heroes that are building 1 million. Their mission is 1 million under 18 inner city black business owners and or under, under 21 black uh, business owners um, in the inner city. And the way they're doing that is understanding basic things like this. It's pretty easy to go out and do this and make uh, and start picking up companies. And instantly you have the top of the line here is equity. What's the difference? No matter how what your IQ is, what matters how far you're going to go is how much equity you're born with, how much equity your parents gave you. And I know that's like what we don't want to believe in America. There's no study no study anywhere. I have studied this more than probably anybody you're ever going to talk to. Social mobility, income ascension, and it, it, it doesn't happen. It, it just doesn't. There's no study you're going to find anywhere where people are. Ask yourself if you live in a nice neighborhood, just who you went to high school, junior high with, the elementary school. You knew the kids who had money and the kids were on the opposite side. Follow them through junior high, through elementary school, junior high, high school, college. If you still talk to them now, where are they at, right? They haven't changed, right? It almost never happens. Equity and dividends. All three money buckets, money now, money over time, and then money later. That's the big one that you have enough money later. This is what we want to do with our passive income. So whenever we put a deal together, fine. The one I didn't include here is a GXM. Okay, so GXM wasn't included on here. GXM is just you go out, you get started, you help the business, you test your policies, right? You test how good, how good you are and how good they are. Keep this in mind. This is how we go from zero to actually owning companies and getting all kinds of really badass stuff going. Passive income pyramid. So three categories of the big Rio Phoenix. <laughs> I love the Phoenix, the 8-bit Phoenix. Basic Bish. <laughs> Still brilliant, but some people have heard of it. Brilliant and legendary AF, right? That's where we live, y'all. Unheard of brilliance to take over the world, and then some. Um, epic, next level stuff. Powerful and unknown stuff. Okay, so it goes, that was the wrong order. Basic Bish, then epic stuff. Brilliant and legendary AF. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, basic bitch. All right, there. Wop. Um, okay, there's, uh, okay, so basic, what is this? Is this, uh, oh, we started? Okay, so these are 20 ways of creating uh, passive income. Single family rental property, rent a house out. <laughs> I love how unimpressed these guys are. Just rent a house out, you dumbass. All right, number two, apartments, rent apartments, commercial real estate. You know what's amazing? This is what people will talk about and tell you like it's some big secret. Like if you rent a piece of real estate out, you can create passive income and wealth. Oh man, no one does that. Nobody does that. Nobody builds. Hear me now. And by the way, 
if the stuff we talk about today and the stuff we're going to go over today and the example, I, I get it, I get it. The examples we talk about, the things I say, the things that heroes are doing. By the way, when am I ever talking about how much money I'm making? I never do. I'm bragging all the time, but it's about other people, what other people are doing because the less you've done for others, the more you have to talk about what you've done for yourself. So whenever you're talking or listening to anybody, whether it's uh, somebody online or a professor at a university or something, always ask yourself, who has listened to them and gone out? What, 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 what? If you follow what they say, what do you get to go out and do? What are you going to do with, with their knowledge or their brilliance? What will, what's the execution pattern or the execution cycle? What have people been able to do? Because that ultimately is going to determine how seriously you should take them and how seriously you should listen to them. So three, master lease option, rent units in bulk or arbitrage. This is where you go out, you buy a group of apartment units. We've done this many times. Go to an apartment complex, get 10 units, pay them, let's say $1,000 a month, and then you rent them out for $1,500 a month. Then, by the way, you turn around and one quick way to do this is to turn around and get that management to pay you for those units, for renting those units out, and then you just get residuals on that. You can get two, three, four, five hundred dollars or whatever residual on that. We've talked in depth about this. For REITs, like buying stock in a company that reinvests the money, so all you're doing is you're going to invest into a company that invests in real estate. Usually 10 to 12% is what you're going to get. Real Estate Investment Trust, REITs, right? Okay, number five, be a private lender. Excuse me, be a private lender. You can use money or rent other people's money out. Right? Uh, we've talked about this, being a bank. There's a lot more we could talk about this stuff. We've talked about other places, and it's really not um, likely that you're going to get insanely far, just being honest. But people have heard of that stuff. Group two, epic stuff. All right. Finance your commission. Okay. This, okay, this is one of those things. When I first started, I wrote a book. The easy, okay, right. The easiest way for any realtor to make $10,000 a month of passive income. Um, it was like a guide. Because my broker, when I first was a realtor, they asked me like, why don't you tell these other realtors why they should finance their commission? And I would sit down and talk to them until I was blue in the face. They never understood it. They never got it. But if you finance, even if it's two, $300 a month, right? Where are you going to be in six months, right? If you do $300 a month deals and you do three deals a month, what happens? That's $900 a month. Start accumulating that. Six months later, you're at five grand. One year later, you're at 10 grand a month passive income with the same amount of work. And these are deals, by the way, if you're a realtor, that you're not able to do now because the seller's not able to sell because of their, because of their equity, I mean. All right, many sellers can't afford, but they can if the commission's finances. An immediate way to make 10 to 25% on your money, and it's money you wouldn't make anyway. This is a huge secret. Realtors don't do this. They hate doing it. They think it's not gonna work in my area or something. Visualize yourself with 100% commission. You can make 120% more. Two deals at $300 a month is five grand a month in under 12 months. Three deals a month and you're at $10,000 a month in 12 months. And, and a residual passive income from deals that you wouldn't have done anyway. It's one of the easiest things to do. When I started, for, one of the first things I did when I worked for brokers, what they would hire me to train their agents to do is this. It's, the, it's a big secret and it was huge and nobody does it. Uh, seven, finance your assignment fee or down payment. Got to get down on Friday. <laughs> Friday. Go support that girl. She came out. People were, we've talked about her before. This works just like a commission. This can help you do deals faster and have people move in today or by Friday. You can do this to start doing more deals and create cash flow immediately. So whatever you're going to make, your three, four, five grand a month or 10 grand a month or 10 grand that you're going to make in the down payment, turn around and finance that or finance a part of that. Let the seller or the buyer pay you on that and you could create a second mortgage. That second mortgage can go out and be on that property, right? And you can make money that way. I had, an agent, I had an agent years ago that just did this. He told his agents, listen, when a seller can't afford to sell their house, let me know because I'm willing to finance my commission. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And in some cases, he would pay the agent their part of the commission on a credit card and he'd make so much money that it would make sense to do that because, and they never did the math. They never put it together. This is really important. This is the marshmallow experiment, by the way, in real life. We're instant gratification versus people who understand they, the third little piggy, the one that spends the most time building the house. If you get, if I say you can get one commission that's X amount right now, or 20% more if you just wait six months or a year, like you go to the kid and say, hey, you little fat ass, you can get one marshmallow now, or two if you wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and like, I want mine now. Most people say that, about 70, 80%, well, people want that marshmallow now. The ones who are thinking, and this is assuming you like marshmallows, it could be like, you know, chocolate chip cookies or brownies or vodka or porn or whatever, but it's something you want right now, but if you just wait, right, you get more of it if you just wait. The marshmallow experiment. This is it in real life. The assignment. Almost nobody does this. I have. Um, I never talk about my money situation, but if you understood, I, I've talked about this person personal conversation sometimes. How much money I made teaching this, and I, I didn't believe it. Like people had to be told. Like you understand that if you, and they're like, oh, okay, and they like. 
you're, that's what you're telling your sellers. If a seller is willing to wait to get paid, they make the most amount of money. There's no question about it. Harvard did a study on money, a uh, famous study I talked about many times. What's the biggest difference between rich people and poor people? Poor people are rich, rich are willing to wait to get paid. They invest in stuff later. This is um, a bigger secret than most people realize, um, being able to finance or wait on your money, financing your money. When we work with medical groups right now, we don't make any money. We just say, okay, fine, keep the money right now. We instantly make 10, 25, 30% of our money immediately, and then we get payments, and then we convert that to equity. As you saw, that pyramid is the exact same pyramid we use. Um, eight, great, the best real estate course invest for real estate investors in area. Oh, wow. That's what's being done, what you guys have done with me right now. You know, it's talk to somebody or anyone who's in real estate, um, do an interview with them. Or well, what do you guys have? Interview successful local real estate investors, realtors, title companies, et cetera. So these are all people that want to advertise. Anyone who's advertising that's successful that knows what they're doing, they're all going to be included in this course, right? You can put this course on uh, Skillshare, Udemy, all these other places. You're going to have the best course in whatever area because nobody else is going to do this. This is its own nobody mountain. But also, you become a little bit of an influencer in that area because anyone who's doing things knows who you are and you've built a relationship with them. Local real estate investors, realtors, title companies, right? You compile all that brilliance and now you have a brilliant course and you've got great contacts, 77s now, uh, in your fan base. And you've also got anyone who, all these people, anytime you interview a title company, all this will be done for free, by the way, because they want to be the title company that new real estate investors go to or use for their deals, right? So you come up with not just a course, but it also helps you build your public Rolodex model as well at the same time because you're getting in touch with people that are, um, and you're asking them. You don't have to have any knowledge to put this together. We have a heroes doing this for multiple different industries. We know how do you create a successful chiropractic business? How do you create a successful so-and-so business? And if you take that course, you need nothing to get started and you'll have instant authority because you came up with this course and just keep adding to it every month. Every time you talk to somebody that has something figured out, find out what they're doing. By the way, you're taking all these ideas and you're, do we include this later? Right, we'll talk about the MFM later because this is a really cool way to get that done. But even if you're selling this course, who's, who's making the most money with this? So it's like, I saw six grand a month, seven grand a month. Once the course is done, if you're selling it for $100, $200, anybody that you talk to that's new, you could tell them, hey, this is a course. Here's how I came up with it. I sat down with the most successful investors in Dallas and wherever, and I asked them, I grilled them for 90 minutes. I put together all these um, you know, questions and answers. I asked them the top 10 questions. Here are some of the testimonials that, by the way, this is a way that you can start using testimonials for the people. So you can, if you want to, how do you get 100 pages of testimonials? Use the testimonials that each of these people have. This is so-and-so here's more about his business because what people see when they see those testimonials is they attach it to you as well not that it's your testimonials but it's like this is fucking brilliant man this is nobody's this is again building a nobody mountain all right uh, number nine bird dog arbitrage so ask everybody you interview for tips on finding deals this the real estate people right so how do you find deals if you're talking to a real estate investor mr real estate investor if i'm out there in the market how do i find a deal when do i know that i should get in touch with you now train bird dogs and property scouts and a few people who execute the people who actually go out and do anything train them to follow this checklist of practices and policies that you're getting from uh the investors right now take the deals they find the, the bird dog people find and help them call. Look, you could say, we always do the same three things. Like if you want to just get calls to a voicemail and get paid on that, no problem. But if you want to get calls and listen to me talk to the people, the sellers and qualify them, we can do that. Or third is you can graduate. You actually get the calls and qualify them yourselves and go off and do your business on your own. Whatever you want to do, it's okay. But a lot of people want to be in that first category. They just want to get calls to a voicemail, make an extra two, three, four, five grand a month. Um, and you can help them do that. Once you have this done, your money, it's just like with a course, it's just money every month automatically. Once this is done, if you, if you work with an investor and you send this deal to an investor, one of the people you interviewed, one of the experts, I'm assuming you have no idea what you're doing and you're not even like gonna grow. You just stay at that level of not knowing what you're doing. Even if you do that, this is a great way to start and this is where you can make $5,000 a month per deal. You go back to the investor and you split it with them, right? Um, you go back to the investor that bought the deal. So bird, bird dog arbitrage, you help a bird dog Here's what you do to go out and find a property. Bring me the property. I'll move it to my investor. That's assuming you don't want to do the deal. And then you make you split the five grand that you get from the investor. That's a really cool way to partner with your students. This is one of the most powerful ways to have a real estate course that actually is something cool because I'm local, I'm here in the market, and I'll partner with you on deals. Easy peasy. 10, bird dog reverse hire. You don't have to move the leads to an investor. Instead, just reverse hire a realtor or property management company or investor to complete the transaction. Instead of bird dogging, where you eventually want to be, if you're good and you have any kind of regular consistency, is just reverse hire the investor. Say, look, why don't we just split the deal once you get the deal? So instead of making five grand, you're making 10, 20, 30 grand per deal. 
And train your realtor to take the calls from that you're going to get from your bird dogs. Screen the leads and do the, do, do the deals the way I outlined and the how to hire a realtor that makes you 10 grand a month uh, for more on this. That's another brilliant class by an extremely good looking guy. Go check it out. Once this is done, it's totally autonomous and subtractive, a self-driving business. The uh, LiDAR, right? Google stuff. Um, this is oh, this is really pretty easy. Once you get the call, all you're doing is getting calls to a voicemail and then training people on how to deal with those calls. It could be sellers or buyers or anybody. And that's what you're doing here, right? I love it, man. I love it. Asset brokering model to own storage units. Why are why isn't everyone doing this? Uh, so we, you guys just did this. We have a whole bunch of people have done this. Basically, find any commercial business that is not using an unused asset. In this case, trucks. Storage units have these giant trucks. It's really easy to get those trucks, rent them out on the weekends for moving. Especially um, so if you're willing to do the work, or if you know people that are willing, you know, especially younger people that are wanting to work out, they can do the moving, and you get paid. Instead of getting paid ten, twenty dollars an hour, you make you know four, five hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars a weekend. Easy. Find other uses like renting out for movers, advertise for companies with signage. Easiest thing you can do. Go to a place like that, so just put your sign on the back. Anytime you see a giant truck, anything unused, ask yourself if your sign, the I buy homes, Anna buys houses, or whatever, an equivalent could get calls. If it could, throw it up there. Again, it's an asymmetrical. You have nothing to lose. And, uh, you know, if you do one deal a year, I could make an extra 20, 30 grand, like a full time income on one deal a year. Um, once this is set, it runs like a small side business. You can reinvest your residuals for equity. So if you go, one of the easiest ways to buy a storage unit, we've had multiple heroes do this, to buy storage units, apartment buildings, things like that. One of the easiest ways is to take whatever vehicles they have, put your signage on it, that's one thing, or just find other better uses for it. Again, you don't have to, it's just like what we were talking about earlier. We are in a control economy. Ask yourself, where is there un assets that are unused? How can I control them? If you can do that, it's an asymmetrical, no risk and potential infinite reward. Number 12, asset brokering with realtor office space. This is really cool. Create a WeWork, create a Regis. Uh, we've been doing this for years. Same thing I used to do with movie theaters when movie theaters were still around. This is a fast way to create residuals by renting out unused office space. How often does a realtor actually use their space? One of the things we've used many times, I don't know if you can talk about this, the yeah, he's so, exactly. Brilliant. This is how well, you, you know, I've always been told I'm not, I don't have any like real obvious talent or anything. Um, but I'll say the one thing since I was little that I've always um, been asked to do and why I got on the news and everything is uh, teaching. Um, I, there's more modest ways for me to say this, but like I am, you know, the one thing I hear all the time is that I'm like the best teacher anybody's ever met. And like, when I talk about like, when I was about to say ESO class, I see it up there. That tells me that I'm doing a good, that you guys are doing a good job of absorbing this stuff because, right, it's like ESO classes are really profitable. We've talked about how you could just start teaching them and working with those people because usually the only people taking ESO classes usually have money. Um, these aren't just, you know, um, you know, the fucking leaf flowers or whatever, you know, like these are like real people who want to learn how to, how to they, have, they actually have money. And it's a great place to go for private money. You can rent the office space to, uh, for driver's ed, ESO classes, remote, virtual workers, Regis callers. They're almost never using office space. It's so unused. Go to any parking place or go to any place after 5 p.m. Everyone's out. The whole building's unused for most of the, almost all their time. And you can start renting that place out. Asset brokering. Again, control is everything. Ownership is nothing. Uh, a hero just made seven grand a month by helping local entrepreneurs have three part-time space for monthlies, hassle-free local entrepreneurs. What do they do? What do they, oh, was it like a WeWork thing? Well, so you can, any, any local home-based business, by the way, you, as, as you talk with people, as you build your 77s, just say, hey, look, if you want some local place, local space, create a Regis, which is Re Regis you pay every month, then you get like a receptionist and a mailbox. You could do that with a real estate broker and say, look, I want to rent out five places. We're going to give office space that they get like, you know, five hours a week or whatever, they can come in and use a conference space at a title company or real estate office. Easy peasy, they make an extra two, three, four, five hundred dollars a month. You split that with them. Again, an asymmetrical, very little input, massive output. You can be a cent. When you look at a building like this, when you go to a real estate office, uh, imagine you were the landlord. If you own that place, you want to make extra money. What could you do? Do those things and you can make money. Group three, legendary AF, the big Rhea Phoenix <laughs> has entered the chat. Okay, and MFM with realtors. Okay, this. No one in the world does this. And this is like the most brilliant thing in the world. It's like, if you got nothing else out of this, I mean, this is like, 
I don't know why people don't do this. You can do one of these things and recreate hundreds of years, all right? So the manufactured franchise model, here's what it is. Collect the best practices and policies and then rent them out. You just rent that piece of brilliance out. Talk to a realtor, for example, get their best ads, their best scripts, their best social media policies. What do they post? Their best voicemails, best emails. Take them and then rent them out to a similar realtor in a non-competing area for an easy five, 10, 15 grand a month. We've had insane success stories on this. You don't have to even do anything. By the way, this works great with what the course. When you come up with your course, you get the best idea of what the best ads that are people are running are and you can move them to another area. It's really easy to do. Whenever you see a business, ask yourself these three questions. This is what we're trying to do. When we want to create an MFM, this is what we look at. Number one, how do they get the phone to ring? Now, the phone could be metaphorical. It could be email. How do they get people in? How do they do that? Number two, how do they turn those calls into clients? And then how do they turn those clients into fans? Basically, the five crowd. <laughs> right, exactly. Perfect. Five crowds. I love you, man. Five crowds. You have strangers, potential stranger, a potential lead, or not, not stranger, lead, potential client, transaction, and then we have a fan base. So, Check this out. The most expensive thing you're going to do is right here when you turn strangers to not strangers. That's the most expensive thing any business will have. What's the only reason a business goes out of business? Because they don't know how much to spend for a client. They don't know how much to spend for a transaction. I know there's other variations people will have. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. They don't know how much to spend for a client. That's the only reason any business goes out of business or is in trouble or anything. Even when people talk about like COVID and stuff, the reason, the problem they had is they didn't know how much to pay. If you know how much to pay and you know you have other transactions you can in include people on, the number one question people have is who can I trust? So if once that you have their trust, you can introduce any number of other transactions to your same people, but you're either not doing that, you don't know about that, or you don't have the process in place. Each level here with our five crowds, when you, what you were looking for when we work with a business, ask yourself, how do they walk people through these crowds? Now, honestly, they probably don't even have the fan base. They don't have people that they're the thriving fans so really what you're looking at is how do you turn strangers into not strangers and how do you do that profitably the only way you're going to do that profitably is to have some transaction after that so we go from strangers to not strangers the most expensive thing a business will have then we go from not stranger now they're a potential lead they're not a lead they're a potential lead and then to a lead now they're a potential client so how do we get them once they're in there to raise their hand and say i you know i might this is something i might want to do this is i might be a good fit for this and then from a lead a potential client into a transaction. This is the most important part of the transaction now, right? The, not the most important part, but the where we monetize it. And then to the fan base. And once somebody's on fan base, we know how much money that is worth, then we know how much more money we can pay for this. The single best way to create income immunity, to, you know, to, to um, make yourself immune to competition is to know how much you can pay for this. This is how companies, um, especially uh, we've talked about like uh, Gutti Ranker when I used to write copy, this is what they do with all their Nutra, skin cream stuff. They just are willing to pay a lot more than anybody else. Each stage here, strangers, not strangers, lead, potentially transactions, client. Each stage has its own maturity process. It has its own Wendy chart um, diagram. If you know why we call it Wendy charts, it's a touching story. Diagrams, checklists, scripts. Each stage, you want to have its own, um, the own process of maturity and walking people through each each phase there. So when they become a stranger to not a stranger, we want to start asking questions like, is this the first time you talked? Is this, have you talked to anyone on my team before? And if not, then they get a specific email and a follow-up and a video. If they are a stranger or they're not a stranger and they're a potential lead, they're a lead. So this is the first time you've talked about buying a house. It's the first time you've whatever. We have a whole process. We've talked about this a lot. The reason this is important for you to understand is when you look at a business, especially a successful business or a realtor, keep this in mind. They're not going to look at it this way. They're not going to talk about, oh, how am I getting the phone ring? How am I turning them into clients? How do I turn them into fans? But you want to think about that. What are the three things, the five things they're doing as a checklist? Because that's all a business is, is a checklist, right? Just a set of policies, a set of behaviors that are creating a result. And you're just going to take those behaviors and probably for the first time ever identify them. What you're doing with these people is you're helping them come with a, a, a manual, like the McDonald's manual from coming to America that the guy's copying for McDonald's. It's not McDonald's. It's just, that's all you're doing. You're helping them come up with that. For themselves, it's going to help their business, but then you can rent it out. Man, you could do nothing but just this, and you'll be, you'll be thanking me forever. MFM email and letter. Is this the actual email you guys use? All right. Hi, Jack. This email is the, the email you asked me to send you. So I don't know if you ever looked into this, but most big cities in America have a sister city that is nearly identical in demographics, economics, local culture, etc. Big business has known this insider secret for decades, partly because it helps them know where to expand locations. Our city of Carmel has a sister, has a sister city too. It is Columbus, Ohio. 
but they're about five to 10 years behind. Nearly all businesses that succeed there will also succeed here and vice versa. Why am I telling you this? Because I got the top three real estate agents in Columbus. Shit, this is good. Because I got the top three real estate agents in Columbus and I got an inside look at how their businesses are producing at least 35 grand a month. That's net take home income. I got all their exact ad script. You know what? If you ever talk to somebody, you wanna know how smart they are, have them go to bigria.com. If they don't come back and be like, this is fucking brilliant. That guy's an idiot. The guy's a total dickhead. Don't listen to him. I got all their exact scripts, ads, listing, presentation, seller, bio, lead generation methods, social media posts, etc. So right now, Bridge, I'm looking for a good realtor team that I can help put these practices into action. When I asked Nathan and Sarah, they suggested I contacted you about this. Please see the attached walkthrough as well as I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Um, I don't know, man. If this hasn't made a million dollars in the last 30 days, um, I'd be shocked. It's brilliant. Another one? Is it? Uh, uh, so, hi, Sam. I left you a voicemail about this. I'm hoping you can help. I've been listening when you were asking about it earlier. Um, I've been helping you collect. I've been collecting the best, the best polling ads, marketing letters, and advertising pieces that are producing the best seller leads for real estate investors. So right now, I need a good investor to help recreate these results with. Do you think you'd be a good fit? If not, can you please help me find an investor who would be a good fit and why? Can you please explain why? Thanks so much. Remember, as soon as you say why, they're building the bridge to you. Okay, um, man, that was, I, I love this shit, man. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, brilliance all around. Number 14, we haven't even got to this. This is one of my favorite ones. I don't know anyone doing this, man. We just got our G-Wagon, two G-Wagons with the signs on the car. She has got uh, some pictures she's gonna post later. Signs on your car. Turn your car into a giant Anna buys houses billboard. Include your number in sight, okay? Here's how, fi here's how financing is, seventy and $100,000 cars. We've have been doing this now. It's ain't no thing. I can almost with certainly say, certainty say, we can go out, buy um, an Escalade or a G-Wag. A G-Wag is a little more than that, but you know, buy a $100,000, $200,000 car. And with this alone, pay for the car and then some. Just by driving it around. You can pay for a car just by driving it around. Get the car, get it decked out with the um, I buy houses stuff. You get the calls and get paid on the deals that are done from your generated leads. That's one way to do this. Get the calls, send them to an investor or an agent or reverse hire them. Signs on your car. Car billboard for your deals. Okay, so this is that's if you weren't doing deals. If you are going to do the deals, there's an easy way to do that. Instead of passing off the deal to your real estate team, um, or get your real estate team to do it for you. So you can pass off the deal just to an investor and just get paid X amount, 5000 2000 Think about this. If you get paid five grand a month for a deal, how many calls do you need? Well, actually, we're going to talk about that in a second. So, right, the um, the bumper. Okay, uh, well, uh, just okay. Hold on, just get, all you guys get me so excited. All right, instead of passing off the deal for your real, have your real estate team, your realtor, your property management company, your contractor, whatever, they do the work for you. So basically, the call comes in, then you've trained them how to walk people through those five crowds. Right, here are the exact policies, here are the exact scripts, the exact diagram. <laughs> Um, the exact checklist to hear when someone's a stranger, when someone's a potential lead, all those things have their own policies with them. Remember, every deal is the same. Screen the seller, maybe. Fix up the property, maybe you fix it up, maybe you don't. And then you find a buyer renter. All of that can be reverse hired. This is all real estate is. You screen the seller, screen the buyer too, but you screen the initial people, walk them through the five crowds, then maybe you fix up the property, maybe you don't. But every time we do it, we're going to find a renter or a buyer. So all you have to, you, that's easy to, to hire people and to reverse hire your team to go out and find renters and buyers at all times. And that's all you're ever doing. Screen the seller, maybe you fix up the place, and then you find a buyer or renter. That's it. This can all be policized and subtracted. This way you get calls, and then they're dealt with with your policies. It's all it's all uh, hands off. Call Car, billboard, experiments, experiments. It's oh, Mike, right? All right, call billboard. Experiment, totally insane. Wish your kids were here so I could smash the testicles. Um, this is uh, something that all, you all should be doing. This is a good starting dialogue. We screen providers, let them know we're putting signs on our car, and then we tar start talking math. So well, you're saying to put cars for other people. Now we end the conversation knowing how much each call a lead or appointment transactions with. I see what you're saying. Okay, so we say, but you know, I'm driving around, I'm putting these cars on my signs. Um, go to Big Ria or I'll bite your ears off. Um, we're, we're talking to people and we're saying, hey, um, do you want to put, um, I, I drive around, I've got you know a car, I've got five cars, whatever, I'm driving around, I'm putting billboards or signs on my car, um, do you want me to put a, sign, a, a picture of your thing up? Car billboard emails. Hi Sam, I saw your ad on website and I thought this would be, so this is somebody, who, okay, so you search for somebody who's advertising online, this is that email they get. I work with the Korean church. We have five to six vans that are driving around town, picking up our members and dropping them off for 10 hours a day. We are thinking about putting up signs on our vans and maybe the van would read something like this, Larry buys houses or the investor's name, obviously, number. 
I don't know how many calls you would get, but maybe it would make, this is an asymmetrical, this is an asymmetrical, it would make sense to do an experiment with you. Please let me know if this is something that, that you think would be a good, you'd be a good fit for. If not, if you could, please let me know who you think I should be talking to about this. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. So um, this is a quick way, man, this passive income. Uh, and when you actually work, so we do with the Korea church does this a lot. A lot of other Asian churches do this. Other non-Asian churches, I don't know if they do it as much, but they drive around the city basically all the time. They have services going all the time. So we had $9,000 a month um, churches. That was with the split. So make it almost 20 grand a month just with these signs on the cars. It's the easy way for you to arbitrage. Sam, I was thinking about putting a I was thinking about a big sign on my car that read something like Sam buys houses number. I wanted to experiment with somebody in real estate to see how many calls and how much uh, is money is generated by doing this, how many leads and money. If you pay for the signage, I'll do it for free just to see how much money can be made for this. Otherwise, you're just telling them, listen, pay for the sign on my car and I'll drive it around and we'll see how many calls we get. I have no idea what I'm doing. Again, we don't fake it till we make it like a dickhead. I have no idea what I'm doing or the best way to go to find a good real estate person. So your help would be greatly appreciated. Please let me know if that's something you think you'd be a good fit for. Or if not, if you let me know who I th you think I should be talking to, I really appreciate it. Remember, we're not trying to close anybody. We're just asking them, would you be good for this? And if not, could you help me find somebody who would be good for this? So you're asking for help on this idea. That's a great stuff, man. Um, getting stuff on your cars. Um, we have been doing this a lot more recently as we, especially like a lot of heroes want to go out and get Escalades. This is one way to go out. And I can tell with almost 100% certainty, if you know, in the right situation, you can easily go out and more than make enough money to pay for an Escalade just with the science. Try your first, your car you have right now first. Create mini billboards. Secure locations for five to 10 signs that produce enough calls for 10 grand a month. By the way, if you're in a place where you don't have a car, go, you know, talk to people in places where they do. These can all be MFM, all these things. Secure locations for five to 10 signs that produce enough calls for 10 grand a month. So this is a block of signs. Go through my science class. I talked about that. Work with realtors, investors to get them to sell or buy or investor leads, whatever you're getting. You're getting those to those people and then you're getting paid. Then you get paid to have a block up for days or weeks in your secured areas. So when you secure an area, that means you've controlled the location, whether it's a house or a business. You know that I put up these 10 signs. I get X amount of calls. Those calls should equal five, 10 grand a month for you. Then you're getting paid from that realtor, from that agent or whatever to produce those calls. And then you know that this group of signs, this block of signs produces X amount of money. Create multiple blocks and cycle through them. Have your posters trained to post them. Usually a block of signs should produce for at least 30 days, 60 days. If it produces for 60 days, you need six blocks of signs to get paid year round. Once you have your sign posters that are following your policies, it's hands off. Hero examples here are a good start because they lead to real killer secret later on. So what, is there someone here that um, I need to talk to about this? This is just regular blocks, right? So we create blocks of signs, five to 10 signs. And then one way, another way of doing this is we go to a realtor and say, look, these are the policies we use to get your house flooded, um, your open house. Um, and if you want, you just get paid. Um, you, you know, three to five grand a month is easy. It's usually closer to 10 to 15 grand a month for these policies basically to get them flooded with calls. And the neighbors also, it's, it's great for neighbors, people to see like, when you sign a listing with me, this is what your house is gonna look like. It's gonna be like 28 days later, all the zombies trying to break in and uh, you know eat the kids. 18, take the home pictures and license them. Oh my gosh, I didn't think you were gonna include this one, man. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is just too brilliant, man. This has been, um, we've been doing, we've been talking about doing this. This is something I'm gonna talk about later. This has been one of the big secrets. We are actually financing uh, two houses, um, two really nice houses with this alone. This is, this is, this is really something uh, big here. Take home pictures. So realtors get dozens of high quality pictures, professional pictures every week, right? They go out and they get their listings done. So what you're gonna do in this situation is you're gonna take um, uh, th those same pictures, you talk to the realtor, the photographer, help them get these pictures up on sites like Getty, Shutterstock, um, ALA, M, Alami, Alami, whatever. There's hundreds of different sites, right? You get your stuff on these sites. Each one is like a lottery ticket. So take those sites, put them up. Maybe people license out, maybe they won't. But what difference does it make? This is the definition of an asymmetric. I was just about to say that. With a big ROI, potential ROI. It doesn't cost anything. You're already paying for get the pictures done, right? Just take them, put them up, and now you're gonna get any, anytime someone downloads a picture or uses a picture, or even in some cases just looks at it, you get paid. Sometimes it's a fraction of a penny. It's not much money, but who cares? Get all those pictures, dozens of pictures up. You've got dozens of lottery tickets up again and again. And there's another big secret to this. Oh, <laughs> this is it. This is the other one. Or this is, there's a few other ones that we're, I don't know if you're gonna get to, but this is another huge one. Do the same licensing, but use drone footage. So now, now whenever realtors go out to get these properties, especially nice properties, even if it's not, just stay, get the photographer to also take drone photography. They might be like, well, it's not a great area. But here's the thing. 
more and more, just go look for what people are searching for online. Everyone's looking for drone photography, epic drone photography, especially magic hour. It's like sunset or sunrise. Um, the, Hollywood uses this. A lot of great epic shots are shot. It's when you get that teal and blue. Uh, Michael Bay uses this a lot for like Transformers movies. It's like the sunset, but also the sky. That combination is very touching. Um, uh, really, it looks really pretty when you when you get it together. And a good photographer can go out and get this drone. For, they they take the pictures and they get the drone photography right. And now you can do the same thing with the drone photography that you do with the actual pictures. You get it put online. What is that? Are you telling me to? Yeah, yeah. We're no, we're good. We're good. Um, you get the drone photography. You put it up on the same site that we just went over, and now you can rent and license that drone photography out. Make sure the photographer takes good, high quality drone footage of the area because really quickly. Um, You'll soon have the large, there we go, the largest collection of drone photography in your area, and it's all licensed, right? So this is something that a photographer can quickly brag about, but you can brag about. We're the largest drone photographer of all um, Indianapolis uh, drone footage or all, you know, um, Cincinnati, Ohio, Dallas, whatever drone footage. And you'll have that because you're going out in neighborhoods every day getting better, more and more drone footage. You're putting it up. Again, even if it never sells, even if nothing happens, it's an asymmetrical. Each one's like a lottery ticket. This is a definition of an asymmetrical. Get this done. Um, go through our epic post about the vacant land models. It's another brilliant post. Uh, it's brilliant, amazing, beautiful. Basically me just being me. You'll see dozens of sites, groups, and companies that will buy and post your photos, your photographs, and drone footage. Once you're in communication with these companies, um, I don't know if you guys are going to talk about this. How do we, how, how have we, you can, um, I won't talk too much about this right now because we're going to go over this later um, in a different class because this is a whole new model. We've built models about after this. This is the best, you want to talk about residuals and getting, um, you know, residual money. When you have these digital assets out there, think about how much money you make from, I first came up with this when I was looking at, there was a, um, a property that came in that made like eight grand a month over the last five years, something like that. And then there was this picture of this black steel, this guy had made about that, about $6,000, $7,000 a month over the last five years. And I thought, man, what would, what's easier to do? T take a picture of a steel wall or to go out and buy a property, qualify for a property, buy it, look at the, you know, hire the property management constantly every year, go over the taxes and the, the profit and loss statements. Or you could just take a picture and make just as much money. Having these digital assets out there is insanely profitable and, um, you need a ton of them to make any money, but you've got a ton of them anyway. Upload them, you might as well. And might as well do this with your personal pictures as well. Ones that, I mean, not obviously like, you know, dick pics and stuff like, I mean, unless you want to. But um, th that would be something, right? The, the number one dick pic provider, the number one real estate agent slash dick pic provider. <laughs> That'd be a good hook. Um, but this, it's, it's an asymmetrical. Once you get this stuff online, right? Once it's up online, what do you have to lose? And these places will buy your footage, they'll buy your photography, and then as you get a relationship with them, you can start asking them what they want and start tailoring towards that. So as you go out, ask your photographer, hey, here's what I'm looking for. As you're out and about on your other jobs, send me footage like this, and we'll work out an arrangement for you, and we'll give you a share of the money as well. Okay, bonus mother grabbers. That was, I love that stuff, man. Those are, it's a definition of residuals and creating money. We've had heroes go out and do amazing things, much more than five or 10 grand a month with just the photography and the drone footage. Really cool stuff. New home builder model. Why doesn't everyone do this? I don't know, nobody does this. Send new home builders quality buyers, quality buyers, they get exclusives. It takes months or longer for the completion, three to 5%, or if you get three to 5% at $200,000, that's five to $6,000 per deal. Again, an easy way to do this, have your sign poster. Anytime you see pretty signs, go out, put my ugly sign up. I take those buyers that call me, I send them back to the new home builder, right? Now I tell each of those buyers, if you go to the new home builder, right, and you talk to that new home builder and you say, listen, um, I'm a friend of Anna's, I'm a friend of Oz's, I'm, you know, I'm a friend of theirs, and so I want to get an upgraded countertop, or I want to get a free kitchen, or a free fridge in my kitchen, or whatever. Now they, they get there. So the first time you do this, the build, the, you want to be there with the builder. You don't need to be an agent, but um, you can just do an option, but it's sometimes easier to be an agent. Um, either Actually, I, with the builders, it's not a big deal. We've talked about working with new home builders many many other ways. Get the buyers calling you, right? Buyers call you from a house. Now you show up with the buyers, build that relationship with the builder. Once you have it, you don't need to show up with the buyers. So one way to do this is we've had, a hero had uh, 20 plus deals at six grand a month in one weekend. Even if it took one to two years for them to build that houses, that means he's making five to 10 grand a month for two years. So you're working for one weekend to make five grand a month year round for two years. You can also do this by letting the builder keep the money and finance your pay. There's so much brilliance here. Okay, so here's how this works. Let's back up. 
You want to get the buyers for these new home builders. One way to do that is to just put out signs wherever you see pretty signs. Another way to do it is just to go to your regular buyers and say, hey, a good friend of mine is a builder in this neighborhood. If you go there and you let them know I sent you, you're going to get a free pool or whatever like that, right? Now you have a relationship with the builder, so you don't need to be there. The buyer just shows up and says they know you, and now you're going to get commission. You're going to get that 3 to 5%. So on a $200,000 sale, the average home price in America is $190,000. For a new home builder, pick new home builders that are two to 300000 at least. So $200,000, if you're making three to 5%, we're talking about at least five to six grand per deal that you're making. Every time someone goes and says your name, you're making five grand. Now, there is a problem because they have to wait for the house to get built, right? That Maybe the house is ready to go, in which case you get paid 30, 45 days or whatever. It can usually be quicker with a new home builder. But if the house needs to get built, it might take a few months. So you're gonna get... You're going to stack those paychecks. You're going to get paid residual. This wouldn't be royalties because there's not new transactions, but it'd be residuals. So this is how in one weekend, he had 20 grand, 20 plus. I don't know who this was. If you go, was it Travis? That had 20 plus deals at six grand. So 20 plus signed contracts in one weekend, he's making about six grand a month or six grand per contract. Now, how long is it going to take him to build all the houses? A new home builder might not have 20 houses ready to go. Let's say it takes them one to two years. That means if you're making that 20,000, six grand, you have 20 deals, you're making six grand per deal. If it takes them one to two years, you're still making five to 10 grand a month for one to two years. So it's one weekend of work, one weekend of putting out signs basically, or once you have your buyers list, send them a quick email. You send out one email and you make five to 10 grand a month for the next two years. You get what I'm saying? Oh, it's fucking brilliant. It's one weekend of work to make five grand a month year round for two years. 40 grand a month. This is another example. We've had many builders who've done this, uh, many uh, heroes who've done this with builders. Go out, start stacking your paydays, work with multiple builders, just using signs and emails to make 10, 20, 30, 40 grand a month year round. You can also do this, do more by letting the builder keep your amount. So this is another thing we talked about. Once they owe you that money, say, you know what? Take that money and keep it. And I want to apply it to a house. So I want to get 20% more. So if you let the builder keep it, you immediately get more money. You can buy stock in their business, like a big business, if it's like traded or something. Or you could say, I want to apply it to a house. So give me the worst house on the block, which is always what you want to invest in, right? Not the prettiest house. The worst house, it will be, that's the lowest ship that will be raised with the tide. And you can get that house. If, if, they, if you let them pick a house, you get 10% off that house usually anyway. But on top of that, if you're getting like 5% and you sell 20 houses, you move 19 houses actually, then you get that other one for free essentially you finance that other one you get what i'm saying so that 20 plus houses he could have just bought a house get a house paid off there's another way then you create residual income because you've rented out a house that's paid off you get what i'm saying give the builder that money and you can actually get houses finance brilliant 21 new home builder financing your money they take the money you owe you and you reinvest it or loan it back to them loan it do a hard money loan take that money they owe you give it back to them private money or hard money by financing your payments commissions you can buy houses stocks dividend like i just said it's a simple way to use a few signs and get blocks of houses for free. Um, go to our GRS model. This is something we were doing with new home builders, the get rich quick, the get rich slow uh, stuff. Um, basically, this is a really quick way to build, like, get houses for free. Uh, between us and the hero at the time, um, it was like you know we were buying basically a neighborhood, you know, um, by you know pieces of neighborhoods at a time. Um, I love this stuff, man. 10 to 20% ROI immediately just by giving them that house. By letting them pick the house you want, you get 10, 20% off that house because you're picking the worst house. Okay, number two, lead generation book. Oh my gosh, this is a good one. Work with a high value transaction provider like a doctor, especially a surgery center. Help them write a book. You can do this in one weekend. All you do is get a list of questions. All the book needs to be is just a list of questions. Each chapter is a question. Make short chapters so people can read it and consume it quickly. Although, Nobody will read it. You don't need anyone to read it for you to make money, and you don't need anyone to buy it. The worst way to make money with the book is to sell it. Weekend book model. Hero made 500 grand a year since 2011. Just get a list of 20 questions. Each one's a chapter. Use Amazon to find the titles of books, the best-selling books in an industry. Use the reviews to get the language you should use. Contact the people with the reviews, the uh, people that leave the most reviews, and ask them what they should include. Look at magazines, magazine titles, which magazines have been around the longest. The magazine covers are a great place. Those are the headlines that are selling the most for whatever topic or whatever industry you're in. This could all be used all in their marketing or in the marketing or the market itself could be a giveaway of the book. So you can sell the book, but it's not, don't look at that as the money maker, although that could be. But the real thing is that it's generating leads and you're getting paid on the leads. One, um, uh, we've talked about this before, about getting this five grand a month. You'll make, there's no one that's made five grand a month of this. Everyone's made a lot more than this. This is a quick way to 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a month, especially if you're working with doctors. You can use the real estate, the same thing with that real estate course. Help you turn that into a book, and then the, the leads that are generated from that, set them to whatever investor is paying you the most. And uh, whether it's investor leads, bird dog leads, private money, or seller leads, and get paid 
four or five thousand, ten thousand dollars per deal. Um, is there a lead generation book used for doublers? Okay, this is the one we're doing the most of right now because I was wondering if you were doing that. This is how you grow a business and put on crack. In the medical field, one referral can make a business an extra hundred grand a month. So the effort, money, time spent on this is worth it. And nobody will have a book that's targeted like this. Nobody in the medical field except us, except you helping them do this. So these are simple deals that can later be through pay-per-click and other marketing as you partner with the business for equity. So the book or part of it should be focused on businesses. So for example, if this is a plastic surgeon or any type of surgeon really, um, you, you, they, if they get one referral, it can make them, it can mean a hundred grand a month. So focus on those referrals on the doublers, the people who would double that business, go to the average business, ask them who would double your business. I have a, a empire IQ question. One of them is real simple. Make a list of people who would double your business if you had their compliance. Now, what are you doing to get in touch with them? Every business is not doing, there's nobody doing anything again and again. Nobody, they're not doing anything. Meaning that for the average business to double, it would only happen by accident. This is a way to do it on purpose, but you can write the book specifically for working with doublers, right? So you can do a separate chapter on here's how I can work with X people. Here's how I can grow your dermatology business. Here's how I can triple your whatever business. And now you start using this as a Whatever, like if you're a dermatology business, other referring physicians, you write a book specifically for those referring physicians and how you can grow their business. Um, no one does this, and it's an easy way to grow their business. It kind of works as a GXM and get a good relationship with them. You get one of these referring people. Think about this. Let's say you personally want to make 100 grand a month for the rest of your life. One way, go to the medical profession, pick any like medical center. If you find, make a list of 10 people who would refer a business to them. If one of those people, 20 people, 30 people, whatever, if you get one of those people to that business, you're making 100 grand a month for the rest of your life. It's not difficult to do. Um, let alone if you do two or three. And if you have a book like this where you talk to them, if you say, for example, okay, so you're talking to a surgeon. Why would we get these men? Why would these people refer a business? Uh, you know, what, what, why would that make sense? Or how could we help them grow their businesses? Let's come up with the top five or 10 questions. That becomes a book. You send it to them, build the relationship. It's really easy to get going and do this, man. And I, there's nobody on, on earth that's doing this. Simple deals. But later you can do pay-per-click and other marketing to drive traffic to your book. Give it away as a partner uh, or give it away as, a, as a, a freebie, a giveaway. And then you partner with that first business for that, that, that main business to get, um, to get equity. I'm hesitating because this is like so amazing. I could talk about this all day. This is one of those things that gets me emotional when I talk about because if I knew how profitable this was, man, I would have done this a long time ago. If you're in the right place, this one thing right here could change your life. Um, uh, so could any of these number of these things, like the, the billboards and the cars and working with like the Korean church, especially that was, I kind of got choked up in there because the Asian community has been dealing with, you know, some hate since COVID and we've been able to uh, help some of these people out. It's really, uh, using our powers for good. 24, build a million dollar year webpage. Okay, this we've been doing right now, slowly been doing this. This is a question that we had. Um, okay, so can you have a single webpage, not a website, but one web page that makes you a million dollars a year? That was the question. The question we had is we picked the most competitive industry, the most competitive keyword phrase, the most competitive industry online, pay-per-click is real estate investing, the most or one of the most. And within that, the single most competitive keyword is motivated sellers. So can we build a page that gets us on the number one motivated sellers page? You can search it, go search motivated sellers. We're almost the number one result on the internet, the entire internet, um, according to Google. That's an example of a nobody mountain. According to Google, that page should make $1,000 a day this year. Um, it takes forever though. It's taken like two years now. Um, and it's just, if you go, we also had some issues recently. We're now we're on the second page because we had these mobile usability issues that we're fixing and cleaning up. Search motivated sellers. Make sure you click on the big real link. The other ones, I'm not down. I'm not talking shit about anybody. I'm not going to you know, talk smack about anybody. But the other results are not nearly as amazing and brilliant as ours. It just takes more time. We have to build more domain and more authority on our domain. This YouTube channel um, had actually... I think it's doubling like every 60 days or something, which is, uh, it's like up to 300 views a day or something like that. Um, but this is an example of a nobody mountain. Whenever it's people talk about like, oh, you gotta do, you gotta go further and above and beyond and work hard or whatever. You should always ask like, where, where would I see that visible in your, your work ethic? Where would I see that illustrated? This is an example. The motivated seller page has stuff that nobody's ever heard of because we've come up with it, invent it and develop it. And then we put different ideas like here's how to get motivated sellers for free and how to build a hundred thousand, you know, $10,000 a month business at least with free sources of motivated sellers. That's what that page is. It's a long answer to that question. How can you build a free motivated sellers and make 10 grand a month at least, 10 to 30 grand a month with free sources of motivated sellers? That's That page is a long answer to that question. And it is an example of a nobody mountain. It's an insane amount of effort and um, you know resources and assets that nobody else is gonna do and nobody else has done. And now 
that page will eventually make a million dollars a year. Um, it's, it should be at a thousand dollars a day by the um, sometime this year, according to their projections. But again, that change is based on like, you get this one usability issue and you got to drop everything and figure that out. So I don't know what's going on with that right now, but we were um, the number two, number three, we should be the number. There's nobody there that actually has a better page um, or a better, more resourceful, more helpful page. Um, one page, you know, it's not in one place. Um, there's videos and downloads, all kinds of stuff. But because of the authority, domain authority, it, it's taken, um, once that gets done, there'll be no, and we, and we keep adding to it, right? But you can do this. Pick something you're really passionate about that's gonna take you, I mean, it's gonna take fucking forever. So don't think it's gonna happen immediately. Something you're into that you enjoy the accumulation of. It's like Morgan Freeman was like 54 when he got um, Driving Miss Daisy. Um, this is before the Andy Dufresne, like before he got it anywhere, he just loved the acting, the process, right? And um, same thing, J.K. Rowling got rejected like 12 times, 20 times. Stephen King, Cujo, rejected 30 times. You got to do something where you enjoy the accumulation, and, and this is, and when you do that, eventually, you know, the world will notice, and um, you'll get. Um, it's once this is up, like already, it's making some money, but once it's up, it's just a magnet. It's not only a lead magnet or a transaction magnet, but it's also. We're in a time right now. How cool is it? You can put up a web page. Like, what is a web page? How would you explain that to your grandparents or their parents? Like, what? What is that? Like, what is Google? How would they have a trillion dollar business when you don't make anything? Um, I guess that they make code. That's not true, too. But you, you know what I mean. And you can do this right now. Come up with something you love. It doesn't matter if there's a lot of traffic towards it. And just build a page. Just add to it again and again. And um, I don't have the answer for you, what, what, what this is for you. Like, what are you as into as we would be? But you go to that motivated seller page. It's obvious these people are passionate. They're obsessed with it. This is a nobody mountain. Nobody is going to this length to get this done. Uh... So again, about this, ask yourself, how can you, you can do this with anything. Just, you just have to love it enough and be willing to do it and enjoy the accumulation. What big problem in the world do you want to solve? You can slowly create content and helpful answers about it every day, every week. Just create a video and it'll just add up. Over the course of years, you'll have the best resource in the world. It's just like that is the single best resource when it comes to finding free source of motivated stuff. There's nowhere else that talks about that with more examples. And we have hero after hero that's going out and executing it only when we have a success to be reposted. So do that with something you're passionate about. What do you want to do. Yes, um, it's going to take years, so make sure you're committed to it. You're going to go years with no results, not money. It's just going to be, it, it itself has to be its own reward, the accumulation itself. Our goal was, is to create the greatest resource in the world on finding motivated sales for free, and we've done that, and we're only adding to it every day. You need a mission like that, like something like that that you want to, we know when we put something up, we're creating generational changes. We're, cre we're able to do what an insanely high IQ won't do, we're able to create a generational shift with people. So you can do that with anything. 25 bumper sticker badassery. So this is what we said we'd come back to, feelyourboobies.com. Um, okay, so this is going the opposite order. You know that? I didn't know if, am, am I doing that right? This is epic and badass in too many ways to count. Get calls to a voicemail so Anna buys houses. You either do the deal or have an investor do the deal like we talked about. You reverse hire somebody else to do it. Um, now get to get the maximum calls, you partner with a volunteer group or charity and get the bumper sticker on every car. Call, if nothing else, this is like the most amazing thing in the world, right? Um, when it comes to like real estate stuff, you know, calls, money come in residually. So how many bumper stickers do you need to make 10 grand a month? I said I'd give this answer. We're not sure completely right now because it could be less. I don't think it's more, but it could be less. But right now, it's about three to 400, maybe 500 bumper stickers. The only way you're going to get that done, we have this done through our heroes now, where um, our special needs group, you know, we now people are actually going, they can download the bumper sticker and put it on their car. And they're doing that. And the, because the special needs group buys houses and we give half the money or we do a split with the money with the group. So now you've got hundreds of cars around your city driving around with your bumper stickers. You either take those calls, you reverse hire an agent or someone on your team to do those deals or you do those deals yourself. It comes in residually. The call is just, you couldn't stop them if you wanted to. How would you stop them? You'd have to close down the number, I guess. You could stop them. But, um, Aside from changing the number, these calls come in residually. Um, you get to make 10 grand a month. You have to get a lot of signs out. Although we've done it with a lot less than that, this is the maximum number that you should need to get these out. We've done, I think the one we used was 210, um, and there was making about 10 grand a month um, for two or three years now uh, consistently. Um, so you could do this with a lot less um, if you place them correctly and you make sure that people are using them. Once you get them up, nobody ever removes a bumper sticker. Right? They might put something over it, but nobody's nobody removes one. Um, so it becomes this residual thing, man. This is a really cool thing. We've been doing this a lot more. Um, there are calls we're getting from bumper stickers we've had up 10 years ago. Uh, this is um, 
we're eventually going to do this with all of our all of our groups. We're going to say, look, this is a quick way we can make residual money. We don't know how much money it's going to make, but here are the numbers. We're building our our execution pattern around this right now. But this is uh, this is this is pretty cool. And you go out and do this right now. It, you can make this happen. So uh, let's talk about what we went over. Nineteen ways to make uh, residual. Uh, Residual payments, uh, rental house, apartments, master lease options, real estate investment trust, be a private lender, finance your commission, finance your assignment fee. Eight, create the best real estate course for the area. That was fucking brilliant. Number nine, bird dog arbitrage. That was brilliant. Number 10, bird dog reverse hires. That was brilliant. Too much brilliance. 11, asset brokering uh, for storage units. Asset to 12 was asset brokering realtor space. 13 was MFM with realtors. 14, signs on your car. 15, car billboard models. 16, car billboard experiments. Uh, experiment, should say. Right, totally crazy, completely insane. Seventeen. There's a question. They're like, Mike, I thought you'd learn by now. Uh, it's like I went to, I went to prison, not Princeton. <laughs> uh, Seventeen. Mini billboard model with sign blocks. Eighteen. Licensed photography. Licensed photographer or uh, photography for the uh, photographer. Porno. Pornography. Uh, Nineteen. Licensed drone footage. And then bonus mother grabbers. <laughs> bonus one, new home builder. I love that. Uh, bonus two, finance new home builder. Did you guys? Do you have the mic over there? This is okay. I don't know if you're picking up any of that. Lead gen uh, book for li license, a lead generation book. Uh, bonus number five, bonus mother grabber number four, four, I should say. Lead generation book for doublers. Bonus mother grabber number five, one million dollar webpage. Bonus mother grabber number six, bumper stickers. What do we go over? Lots of brilliance. We're covering more than 25 ways that any real estate investor, anybody in real estate, any business can make five to 10 grand a month residual passive income in the next 30 days and every month. After that, using uh, from using any one of a large number of models, paid for life, work once, get paid residually. Went over five ways to get equity, ownership, and companies so you don't have to get money and payments, but they let you build social mobility with each deal as well. The, our uh, passive income pyramid. So we understand how we can do the same work and you get paid differently based on your arrangement with these people, right? And we are in a controlled economy. You don't need anything to get started and it's never been easier to do it from your house. My goodness. We also went over the exact appliance dialogue, emails, text campaigns that you can copy and paste and use today. Whatever stuff you get from me, man, you guys, make sure you like the stuff, you engage with it. It sends the message to the universe, to Google, to the world that we gave, that we did what we said and that you uh, you got what you wanted out of this. Go to BigRia.com for more badassery. There's the Phoenix, the Big Rhea Phoenix. Remember, your thoughts are alive. Use them carefully. It's uh, a brilliant quote from a brilliant, brilliant man of our time. Guys, go to BigRia.com. It's the most amazing stuff. It's an example of a nobody mountain. If you're not into it, if you don't love it, if you're not like, holy shit, this is fucking brilliant. If, I'm sorry, I, I, that's, it's, not, it's not for you. You can move on. But it's an asymmetrical, right? If it is, it could change your life. Change your life of 100 years from now, your kids and grandkids could be better off. Go to BigRia.com. You'll love the stuff you get from us. Thank you so much. Is that it? Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thanks. We'll talk soon. Thanks.